Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. Today we're gonna to be doing a video talking about how we can be more environmentally friendly and aware in our work as artists. This is by no means a finished list. Um, these are just some ideas that I use um, in my studio and in my work. Um, I encourage you to comment below with strategies that you have to not be so wasteful and to be more environmentally friendly as an artist. So let's just jump right into it. Um, my first one, is to reuse packaging that we receive in the mail. So I order some art supplies online at times. Um, we order different things from different online venues. And inside of those packages, you're always gonna find bubble wrap, uh, those little air pillows. You can find packing paper. All that stuff is awesome to reuse in your own shipping when you're shipping out artworks. Um, recently, I've been doing a lot of paint by number kits and I always put a nice packing paper at the bottom um, to put all the supplies on top of, and I've hardly had to use the, the packing paper that I've actually had to buy because I have reused so much from the packages that I've received. And then also, just the boxes themselves that you receive, um, that you receive packages in. I've shipped paintings in boxes that have said things um, like a dog kennel, uh, I think a toilet seat was one of them, and I've never had anybody complain. I think it's smart to reuse cardboard boxes, um, and it definitely produces less, less waste, um, for sure. Um, the second one that I would like to talk about here is reusing canvases. And I know this can be tricky sometimes. Um, if I'm cr creating a professional painting, um, that I know I'm going to want to sell or potentially have in a gallery, then I won't really reuse a canvas for that. But if I'm wanting to practice a few things, do a painting just for myself, um, then I will reuse canvases. All it takes is some nice gesso over top, some sandpaper, uh, if there's texture of the painting that you need to get rid of as well. And then you'll have a perfectly good canvas um, to use. Uh, this one kind of goes with the third one as well, and that is purchasing supplies from a thrift store. Uh, so there's so many supplies out there. Like the amount of production that goes on is crazy. So if we can start to reuse some materials that other people aren't using anymore, I think that that's great. Um, you're not always going to find the best quality products at thrift stores. Sometimes you can get lucky and uh, find some good materials. Um, but even things like just cheap paint brushes if you're doing some practice stuff um, or like I said canvases, you know, you can find um, a lot of cheap artwork at thrift stores and that is, you know, that you could repurpose those canvases to then do your own work on them as well. Um, another big thing from thrift stores is picture frames. Frames for painting is their crazy expensive especially if you want custom framing done um, but you can find really good frames at thrift stores I found some awesome ones um, that I used have used for my paintings so check out your thrift stores if you're looking for frames um, that is a good place to look the fourth tip I have is to have a scrap paint painting so sometimes when you're done um, a project or you're done working for the day you might have some paint left over on your palette and if you're an acrylic acrylic artist um, like I work with a lot of acrylics it's not going to last over overnight <laughs> well, for you to use the next day and so sometimes I'll just have a canvas beside me and I'll just use that extra paint on that canvas quickly and most times it just turns out to be some abstract um, or very impressionistic type painting but it's a fun idea to be able to use that that paint so you don't waste it and um, practice some things that you normally wouldn't with, with extra paint. Um, along with that, uh, I try my best to put out the amount of paint that I'm gonna use. I think that goes for pretty much every artist. Paint is so expensive that you don't wanna be putting out so much that you're wasting a lot at the end of each painting session. So that's a little extra tip in there as well. Number five is using cadmium free paint. So I'm not, um, fully versed in the cadmium research. I know that there's been some studies done um, saying that cadmium, which is an element, is harmful to humans and animals. Over time, less and less cadmium has been used in some colors, such as red and oranges, um, I think some yellows as well. But a lot of major um, painting companies, such as Golden and Liquitex and Winsor & Newton, they've come out with cadmium-free paints. 
from what I've seen, I don't, well, from what I've seen in my, my local shops, they're the same prices, the cadmium and the cadmium free. So you may as well just go with the cadmium free. Um, if some of you know more about this than I do, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, but this is just a thought I had. Um, that is an, a good way to help out the environment. Number six, I know it won't work for everybody, um, but you can sketch things out digitally before transferring them to actual materials where you're going to do your final product. Um, so for myself, I do a lot of work with wood uh, and wood burning mixed with acrylic painting and so on. But when you are burning onto wood, you really only get one shot. If you mess up, there's not you can't replace the wood. If once it's burned, it's burned. And so for a lot of my um, war artwork with that and that has wood burning i will design everything on my computer first so i can erase things try things out and then once i like my the product that i have on my computer then i will transfer that and do it on a piece of wood this way it's saving me a lot um i'm not having to scrap a lot of wood and um yeah not using as much materials this could be used for some types of drawings and things like that um but Think about it for your own practice. Maybe it could be useful for you somehow. Number seven um, goes to asking customers to bring reusable bags to pick up artwork, um, especially at markets. Um, if you do any types of markets, I do a lot of markets around Christmas time, and I encourage customers to have their own reusable bag. Um, so I'm not having to get out, give out plastic bags um, when I sell some of my products. Um, I've never had anybody complain about this before. Nobody's really expected me to have bags for them anyways, uh, which is nice. And sometimes I've just used um, plastic bags that I've got from different stores at different times, like the dollar store or um, the grocery store if I've, if I've forgotten my own reusable bags, because I try to use my own as well, um, as much as possible. And nobody's ever had a fuss over that either. Um, people, I think most people are pretty happy with trying to use less plastic bags. And the last one is number eight here. Check the label before washing everything down the sink. Um, so a lot of things um, shouldn't just be washed down the sink. Even acrylic, pla acrylic paint and the brushes, it says to clean with soap and water. Um, if there's acrylic paint buildup, I try to get rid of that first um, before just dumping water down the drain because that acrylic paint can just kind of settle in your um, pipes and can cause some plumbing issues. Um, so I, so one strategy I've used is having just a bucket outside with some sand, dirt, and gravel. I pour the water in there. The water will evaporate, leaving the paint residue behind. And then I can just, you know, if that ever fills up, it hasn't yet for me, then I can put that into um, just the garbage. And I know that's still going to the landfill and it's not good, but it's better than it getting into the water and getting into the pipes and the sewer system and all that stuff too. Um, I don't paint with oils, but I know that there's paint thinner involved and all that kind of stuff. So just be aware of how to properly clean up your materials so you're not um, causing damage where it could be avoided. All right, the ninth one we have on our list is using scrap fabric or old clothes as your cleanup rags in your studio. Um, so I've seen a lot of artists use paper towel or things that are disposable, but something that I've been doing for a little while now um, is just taking old clothes that has holes in it or there's there's rips so I'm not going to be able to donate them. I just cut them into squares and I use them as rags to dry off my brushes and clean up anything um, in my studio. It's a good way to reuse stuff that would have just been thrown out anyways and get a little bit of a longer use out of it. And the tenth one, the last one here, is to donate paintings that we might not be using or wanting anymore instead of just throwing them in the trash and adding them to the landfill. I'm sure a lot of us, I know I do, I've got paintings in my studio that have been here for quite a while. Um, I don't even have them listed on my website <laughs> to be selling or anything like that. So I may as well just find a place to donate them to, whether that be a thrift store, a secondhand store, or somewhere that, you know, would appreciate some artwork, um, especially handmade local artwork on their walls. You never know who would be interested in that. If you've done that before, I'd love to know who you've donated to in the comments below to give the rest of us ideas of where we could do that as well. Hey everybody, I just wanted to add an 11th a bonus way that you can be environmentally friendly in your practice as an artist. And that is if you are making prints of your artwork or products of any kind is to find a company that will be 
environmentally friendly as well. Recently, I've been in touch with um, and have become affiliated with T-Mill. T-Mill is out of the United Kingdom and they work on what is called more like a circular production. So instead of just them making the products, the products go into the consumers and then eventually once it wears out, those products going to the landfill, what they do is they attach a QR code to each of their products and once it goes to the customer and maybe it's like a t-shirt, that t-shirt wears out, the customer can scan that QR code. They will get a free shipping label to ship the t-shirt back to T-Mill. They break it down and they can make it back into new products again. And the customer then gets store credit to purchase new um, new products from, their, from that store. So it's a good way to um, support, you know, this getting things out of the landfill, um, that circular production instead of more of a linear production. There are some other companies out there that I know um, try to be emission free in their productions. Um, so when you are looking at making prints or any types of products of your artwork, check out the companies you want to use, see what they're doing first, and then um, you can go from there. So there was just a little bonus there that I've recently found out and I thought I wanted to add that in here. So here's 10 ideas of how you can be more environmentally friendly and aware as an artist. If you've got more ideas, I'd love to hear them in the comments below, as I'm sure the rest of the artists watching this video um, would appreciate that as well. So thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And we'll see you next time on Brian Sloan Artist.